Hi, it's Payam here from Niche Advice. Hope you're well. In these videos, I'm trying to answer some of the questions that are left underneath some of my videos. Um, this topic is actually brought to you by James. James has left me a, uh, a, a note uh, under one of our videos to ask in regards to buying a property where on a, for a, on a buy to let basis with minimal income. If you've got low income, can you still invest into buy to let properties? And the answer is firmly yes, you can, but it depends. Um, so let's talk about it. Um, there are a number of lenders in the UK that do not have a minimum income profile. Now, this used to be historically um, non-high street lenders frankly the lenders you wouldn't have heard of but more and more lenders have actually come in and have now waived their income profile nat west being one of them okay um uh, recently who just removed their minimum income profile so there is a whole host of lenders now that don't actually stipulate minimum incomes the historical rule that used to be there and a, n a number of lenders still have that is minimum income of twenty five thousand pounds so you've got to have a minimum income of £25,000. Generally, the, a lot of the, those lenders will say that income needs to be derived out of employed or self-employed income, not property income, right? So that cannot be from property. It needs to be from your employed or self-employed income. So that was the traditional rule, and many high street lenders still have that rule in place. However, the good news is there are a number of lenders that don't have that stipulation anymore. They still, very importantly, will check income. They will still ask for your income. They will still ask for evidence of your income because self-certificate mortgages are no longer around. They're actually not allowed anymore. So what, what they will look at is to say, right, we understand the nature of people's earnings nowadays is not straightforward. Not everybody gets paid every month on a certain set salary. So they'll look at self-employed people, they'll look at lower incomes, because you could be, and I'll, let's go through the examples. So you could be earning 100,000 pounds a year, right? And the other person could be earning 18,000 pounds a year. However, you, the person who's on 100K, has got a mortgage of three and a half thousand pounds, and guess what, you've got a Range Rover worth 500 pounds that you're paying commitment to, you've got a student loan you're paying 200 pounds to, you've got pension contribution of 250 pounds, you've got maintenance payment for your ex-wife and, and, and your kid for 300 pounds, um, you've also got a credit card and a bank loan, right? But you're on 100,000 pounds. So this is, this is how, silly sometimes lending rules are uh, and, and unflexible I, I suppose but you could be the 18,000 18, pound person you live at home you don't have a student loan you don't have any commitments you don't have any big uh, mortgage commitments okay and you're comfortable living at home and, and, and you're fine and you've got the deposit money there you've shown that you're actually saving with that 18,000 pounds you've got savings and you can show a build up of savings um, and you can show so build up of if the, if something goes wrong, um, you know you've got you've got some money for the rental voids. Now, if I was an underwriter and I saw this this person, yes, they're on a hundred thousand pounds, but they're heavily geared, and I saw this other person who is not geared. Okay, My common sense tells me, and they're both sort of looking at their first buy to let. Um, I would probably give it to the person who's who's at home right and don't get me wrong people that are living at home do own buy to let i do loads of them okay lots of people that prefer to live with their family own other buy to lets out there right a little bit tricky on your first one because you've got to prove that you're not going to live into it you've got to, there's all sorts of rules around um first time landlord first time buyers and i have done a video on this and i will leave it here so go and watch that if you do not own anything and you're looking to get into buy to let right but there are specific rules but just for this example maybe you maybe you do maybe you own a property and you don't have a mortgage on it or maybe you've got a very low mortgage on it where i'm coming from is you can't just treat people with one rule right so that's what lenders have caught caught on that they're like okay we understand this we understand not everybody can earn 25k i don't want to be turning cases down if someone's earning 22k if someone's earning 19k it just depends because one rule if you're buying a property for five hundred thousand pounds and you're on 25k it doesn't really matter whether you're earning 22 or 25 however if you're buying a property for 80k and you you're on twenty three thousand pounds why wouldn't you do it so 
there are lo lots of lenders now there are specialist lenders that, that have that rule there are high streetish lenders that i've mentioned that have that rule what's the difference well the difference is, is rental calculation how they treat you um obviously the rate their underwriting criteria the type of lending they will do the type of properties they will consider the type of clients they will consider um, so um, but the, the take away from this is yes there is flexibility within the market now um, I still you know I still believe you know guys I'm not saying this is you know you could be earning nothing you could be on benefits and then you can get a buy to let property I'm not talking about that I'm talking about people that can generally say right I don't fit that mold however I have got income and I can prove that income but it's not you know with the norm so anyway um, I hope that's useful and I'll catch you on the next one take care the content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.